Ah, uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Santino Bros Presents California Love Kickoff Show. It's coming to you live March 30th at 11 a.m. Pacific time on Fight TV. Tickets are still available, though. Make sure to check out SantinoBros.net for those. We'll also have a link in the description below. This one is big. People are pumped for it as it's going to be kicking off the collective on WrestleMania weekend, setting the stage, setting the tone, and setting the bar. With me today on my left, let me introduce first former Santino Brothers champion, Slice Boogie Slice. Thanks for joining us. You're going to mention that I never lost that belt? Or you're just going to say former like I lost or something? Well, you you were the you were the former, former champion. Santino Brothers heavyweight championship. Never lost it. Got injured, ruptured Achilles. I'm on my way back. Ask this guy over here. His his guy got it right now. It'll be mine soon. You heard? Well, spe speaking of that, his guy on my right, Damian Arsenic, the right hand man <laughs> of the champion Che Cabrera, as well as Ronchi Rico. Thanks for joining us today. Make sure you say that again, just for that guy listening over there. Who's the current heavyweight champion right now? The current champion is Che Cabrera, and it, we're definitely going to get into that. And who ensures Che never loses that title month in and month out? Che beat me, though? Never beat me, right? <laughs> Folks, don't, don't forget we'll to mention that, we'll, bro. We'll, we'll don't forget to that. mention we'll, that, bro. We'll that. Folks, things we'll are already getting that. heated here. It's going to be man. a good one. Let's talk about what this show is going to have on it. First, we've got a six-way scramble for the Inner City Championship. Kodo Hero versus Primo Henio versus Richie Coy versus Alec Tomas versus Big Dick Haas versus Rob Shit. Six individuals who have proved to be tough and competitive but only one can get the win in this six-man scramble with a rare opportunity for an inner city championship on the line. We've also got Tyler Bateman versus Ronchi Rico, two of the most dangerous men on the roster with a long history. Square off as the goddamn man seeks revenge for Ronchi Rico's involvement in Bateman's Santino Bros championship opportunity. Eli Everfly versus Kid Bandit. One will take to the sky while the other will take control of your imagination. Eli Everfly will do battle with Kid Bandit in a match that is sure to amaze and possibly go viral on social media. Dom Kubrick and Lucas Riley team up against the Bomb Squad, the DKC and Cameron Gates. New attitude, Cam Gates reunites with Bomb Squad teammate the DKC to take on an explosive team of Dom Kubrick and Lucas Riley in what is sure to be a high octane clash of fan favorites. Bad Dude Tito and Matt Vandegrift get into the ring. Two Santino Bros alumni who have started to make waves across the wrestling world, but for much different reasons. Bad Dude Tito with a bruising style versus Matt Vandegrift taking to the skies. Which style will prevail? We'll have to wait and see. And Che Cabrera looks to defend the Santino Brothers Championship against Willie Mack. The era of Cabrera has reigned since early fall and Che looks to continue his dominance as he faces Willie Mack, a challenger known worldwide after taking wrestlers from all over the globe to the limit. Will Chocolate Thunder usher in a new era? And in our main event, Lila Doom, the inner city champion, defends against Heather Monroe and Johnny Roddy. It's a title fight, and Delilah Doom has proven to be as tough as they come, deflecting all comers, but soon she faces the double danger as she'll look to defend against not one but two opponents, the number one contender Heather Monroe and the troublemaker Johnny Roddy. Santino Bros presents California Love as part of the collective on March 30th at 11 a.m. Pacific time on Fight TV. Your city is the bomb if your city making 
Welcome back, folks. We start the big show with a six-man scramble again with a shot at the Inner City Championship on the line. You're going to have to keep your head on a swivel on this one as six tough competitors look to try to get their opportunity at a title shot. Slice Boogie, you're a competitor. You've been in the ring. You've been in multi-man matches. What do these competitors have to do to be competitive in this match? Six people, one match. Uh... It may be counterproductive, but you're going to have to work as a team, right? Eventually, alliances are going to be formed. It's going to be like the Hunger Games out there. You're going to pick your partner, pick your poison. I know Rob Shit and uh, Hoss, they work together. I can see them clearing house, and then to the victor goes the spoils. So, uh, you know what I mean? That's what you got to do. You got to join up, lay everybody out, and then get busy. You know, Damien Slice makes a really great point here about having to team up. You work with multiple wrestlers, and you, we've seen them team up in the past. Are teams going to help each other in this one, or are they going to become a danger to each other at the end? I say it like this. At the end of the day, teamwork or not, everybody wants to be the best. And out of everybody that you mentioned inside that scramble match, the guy who I see with the most potential, the guy surging up, and the guy who I think is going to take it all, mark my words, Koto Hero has this in the bag. That's my dark horse. Yeah. Koto Hero has put money on it right now. Well, only one of these men in this whole match is 300 pounds plus. Let me tell you why it does matter. You see, I paid Hoss Hawk to do a job for me. He couldn't even get that job done. You really think I think that now he's gonna go and then beat five other people? He maybe he wanted to jerk you. He maybe he wanted one person. Maybe he wanted to jerk you. I end up drinking him. You don't him. care about your money. I, I end up care about him. He didn't get nothing. He's doing he this for himself. Done, he didn't get nothing. So did you pay him? Sir, did you pay him to do this match? Koto's my hero. So we, we've got your prediction, Kodo Hero, a very good one. I think he's someone who's quick and is going to be able to keep his eye on everyone going. Because he's never been there before. Your pick is Haas, Big Dick Haas, being the big strong man in the group. Kodo and Richie combined weigh less than Haas. He's going to crush them. Who's picking Haas up? Interesting Who's keeping here. his shoulders on the mat? Who? You know, my they're, pick? They're baby. I think, I listen, think listen, listen. I, I wrestled Haas. I'm 240. I wasn't manhandling him. I beat him by the skin of my teeth. You know, I might have had to kick him with the sun don't shine. Six people. There's no DQs, right? You know. You think he's not going to do some dirty shit? I, my pick is Hoss. Man. All of them well, I'll tell you this. We got money. I, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on Jack Farmer. Hold on, Jack Farmer. I think Alec Tomas here is the one everyone should be looking for. Someone who we have seen take major punishment from some of the biggest names here at Santino Brothers and keep on ticking. I think he's someone who can hang with the fast wrestlers and the big wrestlers. I got my money on Alec Tomas. Alec Tomas. <laughs> uh, Couldn't well, even beat Jay. Well, we'll have to see what happens there. But for now, have you ever dreamed of being a pro wrestler? Why dream about it when you can be about it? Check out these words from Santino Brothers. Dynamite. Did you know that the devil has the eyes of a goat? Bring that up because you should let me know I see what you're doing. And I should have seen it coming. I had Damien already accounted for and forgot about you. That's, that's on me. Can't be mad at you for that, can I? Turns out I can. Turns out I am. And on March 30th, Collective California love a lot of things to bet. Damian Arsenic has been guaranteed, no debate about it, a victory. And you, Rico, you've been friends, you've been enemies. But I expected better from you. Not about putting another knife in my back, but I thought you were better than everyone else, because I've heard it time, and time, and time, and time, and time, 
and time and time again! You're not anyone until you've beat me. I'm going to be the one to put you down. I am going to beat your ass. Rico, the leather jacket I wear to shows has a badge right there, and it says the goddamn man. It's not just a piece of merch, it's a name tag. I'm gonna put this all to bed. I'm gonna put you down. DA, you put your nose in that business, and I'll put you down too. I'll stack bodies to the ceiling to get what I need. <gasps> Welcome back, everyone, to the Santino Bros California Love Kickoff Show. In our next match, this one is going to be between two veteran wrestlers, but I think it's going to be a pretty ugly one when you look at who is in it. Tyler Bateman, very upset with Ron Rico for his involvement in Tyler Bateman's Santino Brothers Championship match. And recently, Tyler Bateman said he was, quote, going to stack bodies to the ceiling to get his revenge. Damien, one of those bodies looks to be your boy, Ronchi Rico. First of all, let me tell you something. Tyler Bateman saying he's going to stack bodies to the ceiling does not intimidate Rico or myself one bit. You see, Tyler Bateman, he used to run with us. We had a group called Hate back in the days. We were, you know what I'm saying? He was our boy. So if anybody knows Tyler Bateman, it's us. El Metal Metal, Rico Dynamite. He doesn't fear nobody. He doesn't fear you, Tyler Bateman. He doesn't fear the guy holding the camera. He doesn't fear you, Jack Farmer. He doesn't fear Slice Boogie. He doesn't fear me. He doesn't fear the Jay Brones in the back. He doesn't fear anybody. Well, speaking of no fear, Rico did recently destroy Richie Coy recently at a fight. Destroyed him. Came in, in strong Slice. Does Rico have something to be worried about here with someone like Tyler Bateman? Rico is like the ringer at the basketball game, right? Like, he could never beat the kids his own age. So he'll just pick on the kids that are like three years younger than him. He picked Richie Coy, threw him around, gave him like ten backbreakers. You think he's doing that to Tyler Bateman? No. Oh, back in the day we used to run. Back in the day. It ain't back in the day no more, homie. No one cares about ten years ago, fifteen years ago. What you doing for Bateman? What have you done for him lately besides be a thorn in his side? <laughs> let me tell let me tell hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me tell you something, Slice. What I do for my guys, it works every single time. You say Rico's a ringer? He picks on people smaller than him? Yep. As far as I'm concerned, Rico will take everybody out here. Because I'm right there by his side. In most, to be fair, in most cases, people are smaller than Rico. But Not this, Bateman. I, I, Not Bateman. I, I, watched this, I don't know if you've seen the video of Bateman. Bateman typically scares me. This video terrified me. This is a different Bateman than we've seen in Santino's recently. Is Rico going to be ready for this guy? Rico's always ready. He's born ready. Came out the womb ready. Well, I think that does it. Damien, I think I know what you're going to say, but who's your pick in this one? Jack Farmer, you insult me. You insult me by asking me such a ridiculous question. You know what? He's on the payroll. You insult Don't me. Don't ask this idiot. He's on the payroll. Don't ask me a stupid-ass question like that. He gets that. paid in donuts and Slim Jims. You Come think on. this guy's going to pick against Bateman? donuts. Snap Bateman. I went to Damn. war with Bateman. Rico never got in the ring with me. Scared to get busy with me. This guy's scared of me too, man. Don't get busy with anybody. I pick There's Bateman. I think put money on it. I rarely would pick against someone like Rico, but I agree. After seeing that video, after seeing the things that Bateman has said, I I gotta go with Bateman. He's terrifying. Let's go. He's terrifying. Let's go. I I there's a, this is a different Bateman we're seeing, and I. I can't imagine picking against Bateman and having to face Bateman and look him in the eye. I'm going with Bateman. He's only terrifying because a man like you fears a lot. Do you want to become a pro wrestler? Do you think you have what it takes? Do you have the ability to dig down deep and do something you never thought possible? Do you have a dream? And are you willing to do what it takes to keep that dream alive? Then get in the ring. Learn how to unleash your inner ass kicker. At Centino Brothers Wrestling, you'll learn everything from basic roles, grappling, the moves, ring psychology, and character development. We'll give you all the tools necessary to wrestle a match with confidence and prominence. We have beginner classes starting every few months. Join Santino Brothers Wrestling Academy, where ass kickers kick ass all day. You don't know the power of the dark side.
I've been waiting for you. Eli, we meet at last. The circle is now complete. When I first left Santino Brothers Wrestling, I was but a learner. But now, I am a master. And I have gone through an odyssey all over. Fighting in all the battlefields you have traversed. You have conquered many, many sectors. But I too have begun my reign of terror all across the world. And now we meet at a grand stage at the Collective. So a California love here in our home. An epic clash awaits. The fly Eli ever fly. The techno witch kid bandit. One on one. May the best one prevail. Welcome back everyone. Our next matchup is one that is highly anticipated as it's got a little bit of that master versus the student vibe. For the first time ever, Eli Everfly is going to be facing Kid Bandit. Slice Boogie, this one has a bit of that Padawan master vibe to it, doesn't it? Very intriguing matchup. You know, you gotta wonder, did Eli teach Kid Bandit everything he knows? I don't think so. I think Eli has some tricks up his sleeve. They're both crazy high flyers. Eli, a little more submission savvy than you might think. And then Bandit tends to go with the kicks. So you're going to get it all. It's like Thanksgiving dinner with dessert. You're going to get a little bit of everything with this match. As Slice <laughs> says, Damien, Kid Bandit so hard to prepare for. They have such an range of moves and arsenal there. But also... Eli, not afraid to take to the sky, not afraid to work on the ground. We could see a little bit of everything here. Listen here, I'm not a nerd, so I don't know none about this paddle and master shit that you're talking about, Jack Farmer. But here's what I'm telling you right now. Eli Everfly, that's my guy. We go way back. But you know what? I think Kid Bandit might have it this time. I just feel it in my bones. And whenever I feel something in my bones, I always got to go with it. Especially since I'm big boned right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is a first time ever matchup. We've never seen this before. I've never seen it. You've never seen it. This is really going to be the first chance you get to have it this. Slice, when a student has a match with a master for a first time, who has the advantage? Does the master sometimes overestimate the student? Or does the student have more of a chance to outperform what I they mean, think their teacher is going to do? It all, it all depends, you know? A lot of wear and tear. Eli has been doing this for a very long time. Doing crazy sh things when crazy things weren't even necessary. I've seen Eli after a match barely walk. Has that has that taken its toll over the years? You know, Bandit's only been wrestling two years, a year, right? Bandit's fresher, but I'm gonna go with experience every time. I'm, my pick is Eli. I hate to agree with this combo over here, but I think Eli gets the job done. In a very tight match, I don't think I don't think anyone's gonna be abusing the other. Huh? I'm going e with Eli by the skin of my teeth. This is one of those matches that I think is going to be one of the more creative matchups we see on the show tonight. Again, Kid Bandit always brings something a little special when they come to the ring, but Eli Everfly and a highlight reel for a lot of the shows we've done before. I'm going to go with Eli here. I just believe Eli has been in the ring longer, knows more, has a broader range of moves. I think that this is one where the teacher shows still has some things he hasn't taught the student just yet.
is this? Uh, what a waste. Rob Shin doesn't have history with uh... And here's the Cam Gates we expected to see. Wait. Wait a minute. No, Cam, Cam, Rob, and Haas, you know, they're usually together, but uh... The Cam Gates keepers, yeah. They... Yeah. see a shove, DKC puts Rob out on the outside, and, and Cam Gates. I mean, Cam Cam is, is, is a man of his word. He said he was turning over a new leaf, and uh, uh, I mean, I don't know if I'd say Cam's a man of his word, but so I mean, far, at least tonight he is, right? Tonight he is. He, he did come to the aid. He saved DKC. I don't think DKC trusts him, man. I don't think DKC trusts him. The second handshake Cam has gone for tonight. Bomb Squad reunites. Bomb Squad back in the building. Is this the end of the Cam Gates Keepers? Is oh, Cam Cam a little shimmy. The return of the Bomb Squad. Joining me at this time, your eyes do not deceive you. It's the Bomb Squad, Bomb the squad. DKC and yeah. Cam Gates. What do you, what do you got? Oh, I got a gift for you. Some bitches Bob Squad merch. Oh, yeah. oh throwback. Right for you. Size. Yeah, right for size me. Too. Yeah. For oh, me. Yeah, right size. Yeah. Oh, my right God. Back. Check, the back. check that hey, you out. You can get them at the show. Yeah, pick them up. At the show, March 30th, they'll be there. Now, you can't have many of these left, can oh, you? Oh, yeah. They're, they're very flying few. off. Very few. Very Vintage. few. Left. Very few. So, you definitely got to get a ticket to the show and get some of these. Thank you. I'm gonna I'm gonna wear it right like oh, this. Yeah, so everyone, yeah. everyone can see. Looks it. good, Jack. And you know, for people who've been keeping up with the fight nights, we saw a change in you recently, Cam Gates. That's right, and yeah. you addressed the fans and you talked about a new attitude you have. And yeah. I wanna say, first first of all, I know you and I haven't gotten along very well over That's the true. years. And and I've had some negative things to say about you, and to be fair, you frustrated me a little bit, but I saw what you did on the fight night. And I saw what you said, and I saw how you backed up your words, and I just want to say, I'm sorry for the things I said, and I I'm I'm, I'm very happy that you, that, that you've come. Bring it in a little bit. Hey, let's, yeah, let's it. Yeah, yeah, it you know what? I appreciate that, Jack. Thank you. That means a lot. You know, and, and I'm so excited. Bomb Squad is back together. Oh, we but, back. But and DKC, you know, you are going to be in a tag team match against a very high octane team, Dawson well, Kubrick and Lucas Riley. Yeah. You've got a little bit of history with uh, some of them, right? Yeah, yeah, I get in there, I'll mix it up. I mean, yeah, yeah. we've we've grown up together, but Bomb Squad is back, and we're gonna lay it to them. Cam, how does it feel? You've had you've had associations in the past, but now yeah. to to be back with DKC, what does it feel like to to have the Bomb Squad back together? It it feels familiar, Jack. You know, I've like you said, I've had connections in the past. This is different. Me and DKC, we started together from day one. We graduated together, we made our debut together, and now, you know what, over the last couple of years, our roads kind of split us up a little bit, but now the Bomb Squad is back together, baby, and we're ready. Now, of course, we want to celebrate, we want to be excited, but there is a match coming up, and like I said, Dom Kubrick, Lucas Riley, both going to be in the match against you guys. You have some history with Lucas Riley, and of course, Dom Kubrick, has been on a bit of a roll lately. How does it feel to get back in the ring with them? You know what? I'm really not worried about these guys. If you guys, I'm sure a lot of you remember, I have wins over both of these guys, okay? And over the last uh, year or so, DKC has been in the ring with some of the legends of these sports, some of the greatest right. in this sport. So it doesn't matter who it is, Lucas Riley, Dom Kubrick, all the history in the world, it doesn't matter because we're here to show that the Bomb Squad is back and here to stay. Well. I would ask you guys to give your predictions. I oh, feel good about this group. I feel good about you yeah. guys. This feels right. I think I'm going to back the Bomb Squad. Yeah, I'm going sweet. Bomb Squad, one. baby. Yep, that's bomb one, Squad, right baby. Jack knows what he's talking about. Before we sign off, can we get the, uh, I got to get the dance and the chop, though, right? We oh, got to get a little bit of the, the, the chop. We got a little bit of the dance. Oh, Let's do it. Yeah. That's you a good one. You're lucky today. That's yeah. <laughs> this is going to be a good one. Stay tuned. We got even more stuff coming up for you. Make sure to get one of these Bomb Squad shirts, March 30th. Go, go. Do you want to become a pro wrestler? Do you think you have what it takes? Do you have the ability to dig down deep and do something you never thought possible? Do you have a dream? And are you willing to do what it takes to keep that dream alive? Then get in the ring. 
Learn how to unleash your inner ass kicker. At Centino Brothers Wrestling, you'll learn everything from basic roles, grappling, the moves, ring psychology, and character development. We'll give you all the tools necessary to wrestle a match with confidence and prominence. We have beginner classes starting every few months. Join Santino Brothers Wrestling Academy, where ass kickers kick ass all day. There you have it, folks. You just saw some clips of our next competitors. We have Bad Dude Tito and the aerial chemist Matt Vandegriff, two Santino Bros alumni that have conquered the world, but in very different ways and different fashions. Damien, you've got Bad Dude Tito, who is just a bruiser slamming people around, versus Matt Vandegriff, who's taken to the skies and attacking from above. What do you make of this matchup? I'll tell you what I make of this matchup. First of all, Tito's my guy. So he's going to walk in there, he's going to show Vandegrift everything that he's learned on his excursions to Japan, and just all around just badassery that he does have and he does possess. I say it like this, Vandegrift, you moved to Vegas, you got more season in this business, you've hit the weight room, you've gotten more and more and more spectacular. Every single time I see the kid, he's very, very spectacular, but you know what he ain't? He ain't a bad dude. No, he's not. Slice, Damien makes a good point. Bad dude Tito, big guy, been in the ring with some big, big names, including guys like Okada recently. But Matt Vandegriff, deceptively big as well, but can also, as I said earlier, take to the sky. Has been taken over Vegas over the years and has been really proven himself across the world. Again, both these guys doing similar things, but in very different directions. Yeah, Vandegriff is one of those guys that's going to make you go, holy shit. All right, he's going to give you a holy shit moment. But uh, holy shit moments don't end in wins. Bad dude Tito, I hate to give him credit. He's one of the few people that I've never beat. He's beat me clean without any <laughs> shenanigans. Uh, when I was young and up and coming, I beat Vandegriff. One of the first fight nights many moons ago. Uh, and they've both gotten better, right? But I got to say, Tito, I think he's just too much. You know, you go to Japan... You go to London, you wrestle Okada, it's a whole lot different than, you know, moving four hours away and beating up uh, some desert-dwelling idiot. So uh, I got to go with Bad Dude Cheeto, and I don't think it's going to be close. You know, I, I think Vandegrift's going to give it his all, but he's going to get put down, man, unfortunately. That's the way it got to be, you know. Everyone can't be, everyone can't be a bad dude, I guess. You know, Damien... <laughs> You both make good points for Bad Dude Tito, and look, I would never argue against Bad Dude Tito pick. I think it's a safe bet. But is there something to possibly Bad Dude Tito looking past Vandegrift? Maybe thinking that he's already the bigger deal, looking past him, and maybe Vandegrift getting a sneaky one. First of all, in this business, anything can happen. Once you step inside those ropes, anything, any guy can beat any guy on any given day. It just depends on where their motivation is and how much they really want it. Of course, Vandegrift has the skills to be able to beat Tito. I'm not saying he doesn't have the skill, but what I'm saying is that as of right now, as of March 30th, as of 11 a.m., Santino Brothers presents California Love, I don't see in a world where Vandegrift beats Tito right now. I just, I, I can't see it. And if it happens, color me shocked. I'll be the first one to admit and say that I was wrong, although I'm never wrong. Well, we'll see if you're wrong at California never. Love again. Tickets are still available. Make sure to click the link in the description. We got one for Tito, two for Tito. You know, I think Vandegrift can pull this one out. I think Vandegrift could shock the world. There's only one way to find out. Like I said, either be there live at the Ukrainian Center or order on Fight TV. Again, those details are in the link below. For now, let's take a quick look at this message. Looking good, champ, looking good, looking good. How was the vacation? <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. March 30th, Santino Brothers Wrestling presents California Love. <laughs> che Cabrera versus Willie Mack. The era of Cabrera versus Chocolate Thunder. Let me scratch my head and let me think for a second. 
Joey Chaos, Ray Rosas, Tyler Bateman, all guys who thought they would get in the ring with Che and they would walk out as Santino Brothers heavyweight champion, but no, they didn't get the job done. You see, Willie, you're great. In fact, we go all the way back. I love seeing all your success. But if there's one thing that you're not gonna do, you're not gonna come in here and you think you're gonna walk out with this. This right here makes this man the great. As far as I'm concerned on March 30th at the UCC when you're laying on your back in that ring, staring up at the ceiling, wondering how you got here, just know you got here because you got your ass whooped by Che Cabrera. And when we're done with you, opening day, Dodger Stadium, Dave Roberts, Thanks for the tickets. <laughs> oh, beautiful, chat. Beautiful. <laughs> Back at the LA Rumble, Che Cabrera made it to the final two competitors, which got him into a title match at Legends Never Die, and since that day, we have been living in what has been called the era of Cabrera. His championship reign has deflected all comers, whether it be through death matches, regular matches, and everything in between, but Che Cabrera looks to be facing his toughest challenge yet as he steps into the ring with the people's favorite wrestler, Chocolate Thunder, Willie Mack, Damian I know your bias on this one. I know you've got some personal feelings towards this one. But as of March 30th, we're at 201 days of the era of Cabrera. Tell me what you guys are thinking going into this one. Well, actually, right now, what I'm thinking is, why do you enjoy insulting me so much? Why do you enjoy I, making your little cheap shots? I hear you on commentary during Che's matches. You make it but, seem like if I'm not out there, Che can win. But Che's the best. He's the champ here. You see, I've been around this business long enough here on this scene to have seen Willie Mack wrestle in parking lots. I've been in this business long enough to have seen Willie Mack in the audience at the Grand Olympic for XPW shows back in the day when he was just a fan. I've been around this scene long enough to know that Willie Mack is one of the greatest products that ever was cultivated here and who didn't really get the just do that he should have gotten. But at the same time, Willie Mack is gonna be in there with Che Cabrera. You said the era of Cabrera, right? Yes. This is the era of Cabrera. We're living in the era of Cabrera. It feels great. It feels like we have great weather right now. I mean, the era of Cabrera is so great, they even decided to bring the collective here just so they can have him on the show. Che is the best. With, with me, without me, doesn't matter who's in his corner. Doesn't matter if I'm not in his corner. As evidence, when he beat Tyler Bateman, it doesn't matter. Che is gonna walk out the UCC as the Santino Brothers heavyweight champion, and we're gonna go to the pay window. After that, we might go to Morton Steakhouse. We might enjoy anything that the Latino meat wants to enjoy. Damian Arsenic makes some great points. Slice Che Cabrera. He wins all the time. What up? What up? What up? Uh, let's go back. L.A. Rumble, right? Yes. How did he get that title shot? He won the LA Rumble? He was he was in the final, final two. two. Final, the final LA two. Rumble. Final two. We giving out uh participation awards. First loser. Let's get the facts straight. LA Rumble. Who won the championship that night? Slice Boogie. Slice Boogie won the championship night. Who won the LA Rumble that night? Joey Chaos. Not Che Cabrera. So we're gonna act like Che Cabrera is like God's gift to wrestling? Let's be serious. If I never ruptured my Achilles, Che would have been out the picture. <laughs> I would have beat Chaos, right? Who knows what Che would have been doing? Y'all would have been giving each other back rubs somewhere in some parking lot. You want to talk about parking lots and Willie Mack. Don't stop hanging on Willie Mack. You can't beat Willie Mack. You know who can't, can't beat Willie Mack? Che Cabrera can't beat Willie Mack. Let me tell you something. Speaking of LA Rumbles, at the LA Rumble that night, Che had the victory snatched from him due to outside interference. Yeah, I'm going to say it. it was outside interference. I was not even in the match. He was on my shoulders. Joey kicked me. He didn't even eliminate Che. He eliminated me. So as far as I'm concerned, 
Slice Boogie, you say that you won the LA Rumble that night. You won the title at the LA Rumble that night, and you did. And you know what, Slice? You're a great guy. You know, sometimes I kind of like you when I listen to you on commentary. But you know what? You are a former champion. And right now, not to cut away from what we're doing here, I'm going to tell you this right now. We have a show called the LA Rumble. I want you to enter the LA Rumble because if you think you're the best, I want you to make your comeback there. I want you to win the LA Rumble, and then I want Che to shut your big mouth. Now, if that were to happen, of course, there's a step between now and then. Che needs to retain that championship. Che is going to retain. Listen, Che is going to retain. That's a formal conclusion already. When this match was announced, we already knew Che was going to win. We already knew it. I know know you got to support your guy. I know you've got to speak up for him, but... Willie Mack is no slouch. Willie Mack has been all over and has a ton of experience against some very big names, and he gets wins against those big names. Slice, I, I know it's got to be tough talking about the championship because I know you were the champion. You never lost the championship. It's not the champion right now, right? But what are your thoughts on Willie Mack here? Does he stand a chance, or does Damian Arsenic have a point? I think Willie Mack gets the job done. I hope he breaks Damian Arsenic's face, too. Are you going to be out there? I am going to be out there. You know what? I've been in the ring with Willie Mack. I know what Willie Mack can do, but he's not going to do it. Been in the ring when? Ten years ago, don't matter. Been in the ring. Ten years ago, don't matter. He's not going to get it done. He's not going to get it done. He's not going to get it done. When you come back, you're not going to get it done. Uh, Kid Bandit not going to get it done. Eli Everfly, he's not going to get it done. It doesn't matter who you put Che in the ring. Cam Gates, he's not going to get it done. Che never beat me, first of all. Nobody's going to get it done. Back in the day, I don't even know if you were around. Che is going to retire. Che is going to retire from this business as Santino Brothers heavyweight champion. Mark my words. Very heated conversation here, but only one of these guys is going to be right, and you can figure out which one it's going to be when it happens live on March 30th at 11 a.m. Pacific time, part of the collective WrestleMania weekend. We're kicking the show off, and Che Cabrera defends the Santino Brothers Championship against Chocolate Thunder Willie Mack. Make sure to check it out. All the links are in the description below. This is the big one. This is the main event. Delilah Doom is putting the Inner City Championship on the line against not one, but two opponents. One of them, Heather Monroe, who earned a title shot all the way back in January of 2020 by defeating Andy Brown. Of course, the pandemic slowed that title opportunity down, but she is here to cash it in. But again, it's not a one-on-one. It's a triple threat 
Johnny Robbie coming in from outside of Santino Brothers wants a shot as well. Delilah Doom says, I don't care. Quote, if it's a singles match, a triple threat match, or if she has to beat 10 other asses, she's going to walk out the same way she walked in as the inner city champion. Slice Boogie, March 30th will mark day 159 of Already? Delilah Doom's reign. Does Dang. she make it past that? I think she does. I think Delilah, when it comes to taking punishment, I don't think there's anyone, possibly on the entire roster, that could take as much punishment as she does. You know, she's not the biggest, short, you know, not the fastest, not the strongest. But when it comes to just taking abuse and fighting back, I don't think Johnny could take the abuse. I know Heather's taken abuse before, but Heather's just so worried about being pretty, right? Delilah's not worried about that. She's bloody face, broken nose. She's going to keep coming. She's going to keep fighting. Uh, I think Delilah got this one in the bag. And I think Johnny and Heather, are, they're probably going to clash butt heads, right? And Delilah might even be able to steal this one, right? Anything can happen. And Damien, that's what I want to ask you. Now, you represent champions. Does it ever happen where a champion like a Delilah Doom maybe bites off more than they can chew? I mean, it sounds nice to say, I'll take on everyone, I'll take on everybody. But did Delilah Doom put herself at risk now facing two opponents? Here's what I'm going to say, Jack Farmer. And I want everybody out there to listen up. Every single show, the match I always look forward to is whatever match Delilah Doom is in. I'll sit there and I'll say it right now. I think she's great. I think she's box office. I think she's money. Um, for, for my money, and I, I have a lot of it because, you know, I managed to chat. For my money, I would bet Delilah Doom any day, any night against anybody except for my guys. But um, that's neither here nor there. But I think Delilah accepting Johnny Robbie's challenge based on her emotionals that she felt at the time. Yes, I said emotionals. Based on those at the time, I think she probably is biting off more than she can chew this time because I think Johnny Robbie is very hungry right now. I've seen her come up. I've seen her have a lot of great matches. I've seen her in the ring with a lot of great people. And right now, I just feel like it might be her time. I mean, we've seen Delilah in there with Cameron Gates. She took a lot of punishment in that match. Uh, we've seen her here at the last fight night against Lucas Riley, which was a great match, but she took also... A lot of punishment there so when you throw her in the ring against two other experienced athletes she's gonna have a long night and as far as I'm concerned I think this may be the last night of that title ring very bold prediction slice now Heather Monroe we said she earned a shot finally getting the opportunity to check cash it in but I want to talk about Johnny Robbie here a little bit and we talk about the Santino brothers Delilah Doom from Santino brothers Heather Monroe from Santino brothers Johnny Robbie an outsider coming in as someone who's been the Santino Brothers champion, how do you feel about outsiders coming in and how do you feel about the potential of someone from the outside becoming a champion here? I don't think it hurts or helps her, right? She doesn't have to worry about Santino Brothers politics, right? She has one job, come in and win, get out. I think Johnny Robbie has a lot of potential to be on, on your television screen, but she's not ready. You know, LeBron went to the championship, didn't win it first time around. My first title shot, I took it up. Took me a while, right, before I won. And I think Johnny Robbie's in that category where her potential has yet to be reached. But her, on potential alone, she's going to get to the championship match. But I don't think it's going to, you know, let her win the match. So I, I don't see her getting the job done. You know, ask me two, three, four years down the line, she'll probably hold every belt. Every women's belt. But right now, she just she has two vets. Delilah's hungry. Heather wants to reclaim her glory, her from, former glory. I don't think she's ever been a champion here. So I don't think Johnny Robbie's going to be able to get it done. I think she'll impress us. But just too, dealing with two vets, too much for her to overcome. Feet to the fire. Who wins that one? Delilah Doom. Delilah Doom, champ retains. Damien Arsene. Do you agree? Who do you think wins this one? Um, I actually think Johnny Robbie's going to win this match. And to piggyback something off the of slice, uh, what he says, actually what you said, Jack Farmer, now I think about it, you say Johnny Robbie is not a Santino Brothers product, but Johnny Robbie comes from somebody who is a Santino Brothers product, Ray Rosas. Mm -hmm. So as far as I'm concerned, Johnny Robbie has already had a title match where she's come up short. This is her second time, and I think she has it in the bank. So we got one for Delilah, one for Johnny Robbie. I'm going to split the difference. I'm going with Heather Monroe here. I think that she has 
earned this opportunity and has been stewing on the fact that she hasn't had the chance to get that shot until now. I think she's been waiting for this chance. I think that comes to play and that gets her the win at California Love. That does it for us, folks. I can't wait for it to be there. On behalf of myself, Jack Farmer, Slice Boogie, Damien Arsenic, and all it, of us I don't here deal with this guy. at Santino Brothers. I don't Brothers. even want to look at this guy. Look at this guy. I don't want to look at this no guy. Worry. Folks, no you got to tune in. Call you got to see it. I'm calling. I'm the calling. Collective Jack, California Love, what? March 30th, 11 a.m. Right now. Listen to me. Check. In the city. To the wild, wild west A state that's a witch go like Elliot Ness Get your ear drum Plug to your chest Get your ear drum Like We in that sunshine state Where the bomb m 10 The state where you never find a dance floor Empty and pimp speed On a mission for them